Hi, I'm Austin Flory, Canada's third best ghost hunter. And today I'm here at Lake Eric, where I'm waiting for my charter boat to take me to one of the most remote summer camps in the Yukon Territory. Word has it, the old groundskeeper of the summer camp has died in his cabin, and now his spirit haunts the very cabin where he lived for so many years. My brother, Tuvok, has called me here to... Okay, f*** off, Tuvok. I can't make it more clear what you're supposed to do during the intro. Your desires are crystal clear. However, mine go unheeded. What the f*** do you want? I always start the show like this. I'm not doing it any other way. Uh, then simply do my part as well. Tuvok, your part is to face the f***ing camera. I can't do it for you. you. Even listen to yourself? Of course I listen to myself. What I say has value. You have not verbalized a single f***ing request to me. Okay, whatever this little act you're doing is for yourself. It's not for me. desires and feedback, and you did not ask for that. Damn it, the camera fell over. Maybe it wouldn't have if you had listened to me. Listened to what? Listen to you tell me what? I think it's still recording. It should be fine. Let's do the intro one more time. No time. Our boat is here. Are you Austin Flory? Yes, I am. Uh, sorry, just a second. Uh, whatever. We'll refilm the intro when we get back here. I think this is going to be a nothing burger of an episode anyway. Might not even post it. It was ill tidings. The foulest dealings that punctuated the hour at Lake Eric. Who had struck their camera? Why did Tuvok call Austin here? What was waiting for these young boys and could they survive it? <laughs> Salutation Nation presents Spook Search 2004 Sonophobia at Lake Eric. We're close. It's just up ahead. Looks like we're already here. We're really close to the shore. Okay, we're here. Looming at the edge of the dock, a tall man was waiting to bid the boatman welcome. A crisp and disarming smile broke up the otherwise serious features of his face. He had a wide-brimmed hat, a mustache, and a badge that identified him as a park ranger. Howdy, Mendoza. Hey. Austin. Tuvok, I presume. Hi. I'm Ranger Rick. You the fellows looking to go to the old cabin, huh? Old man Jenkins' cabin? Yes, that's right. I'm Austin. I'm Canada's third best ghost hunter. <laughs> and I'm Tuvok. Right. Right. I was waiting for you, boys. And I'm out of here. See you, Rick. We'll need a pick up around 8 a.m. or so. Does that time work for you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You're not gonna need a pickup, bro. All right, let's get your bags into my all-terrain cart. The sun sank low as Rick bid these boys aboard his vehicle. And soon he started down the road towards their inevitable destination. The sky was awash in the sickly orange light of the coming October night. Darkness would soon be upon them. And what brings you out to the old cabin? A will reading. We're here for the official reading of the will of Old Man Jenkins, which I assume the attorneys are already on site waiting for us. <laughs> right. 
Of course. Yes, they got here hours ago. They're waiting for you at the cabin. Well, actually, we're here to record the apparition that is Old Man Jenkins haunting the cabin. Or, I guess if there's any Scooby-Doo fakery at this reading, and someone in a sheet is trying to scam someone out of land or something, uh, we're here for that too. Isn't that all ghosts? Aren't they all grown, naked men in sheets? Do you even watch my show? I've recorded multiple real ghosts. I have not seen your show, but if I had, I am sure I would be able to explain each phenomenon you record as merely a wayward piece of light or a trick of the heart. A trick of the heart? No, he's right, Tuvok. Ghosts are very much real. Looks like I'm once again in a car with a couple of people who are much stupider than me. D Rick, tell me, have you ever seen ghostly activity out here? Oh, sure. This end of Lake Eric has been mostly abandoned for decades. Apart from the occasional traveler, like yourself, and old man Jerkins. People go missing out here all the time. All it takes is one wrong move and BAM! Your spirit. Well, actually, ghosts can form from a number of scenarios. Foremost amongst them is tragic death, but the underlying mechanic is almost always related to unresolved business, or as some academics refer to it, Blah, it's... blah, Professor Pentecostal. You know what? I hope there is a ghost to this will reading, because I wanted to scare the shit out of you. <laughs> I think you'll find, brother, that there is no ghost, but if there was, I would still not be scared. Coming up on your right here, you'll see old Camp Doom. Camp Doom? As in Frank Herbert? Doom. Camp. Doom. A little ironic that a failed summer camp is called Camp Doom. This camp might look rough now, but in its prime it was a veritable cornucopia for mischievous kids, teens, and camp counselors of all ages. This was a place to be for anyone looking to have fun and get up to summer camp shenanigans out in the remote Yukon territory. How long has it been closed? Oh, I reckon since the late 80s. This part of the lake would have been completely abandoned if not for the cheap power coming from the dam they built to power the camp. Huh. If the camp is abandoned, why was old man Jenkins still here keeping the grounds? Messed up that you'd call him an old man, Austin. You called him an old man first. Why can't I say old man? Messed up that you'd ask that. Well, boys, looks like we're at the cabin. Odd. I don't see anyone else here. I thought the lawyers came ahead of us. Right. Yeah. They must be inside. You boys should, uh, go check it out. I think we will. Thank you, chauffeur. Is it customary to tip here? I am a park ranger. And here is ten dollars. Thank you. Thanks. I owe a lot of my student loans still. Come on, Tuvok. Let's check this situation out. Austin and Tuvok went up to the door and apprehensively clicked it open. After pausing only a moment on the threshold of the cabin, they ventured in. Huh. Dark in here. Not a lot of light, either. Eh. Lost in the oppressive darkness, a sense of dread started to settle into the thick air of the old, dank cabin. It's a pretty big cabin. They might be in the back. You look for your lawyers. I'll look for the light. Yeah, my lawyers, you weird fucking asshole. Aloof to the danger of the unknown, Austin pushed ahead. Slowly, his eyes began to adjust, aided by scant shafts of light piercing through old holes in the roof. Huh, this place is kind of messy. Yeah, there's a big pile of wet rubber in here. Wet rubber? With a start. Austin tripped over something odd in the middle of the floor. Huh, that's weird. An old EVP. Can't quite make out the serial number, but this looks like it's vintage. From the other room, Tuvok called out to Austin. 
I found the light switch, but it doesn't look like the power's on. Weird. I'm starting to think something is off about this place. Austin's heart quickened. Within the inky blackness, he thought perhaps he could sense the presence of someone or something unknown. He felt his hair stand on end. Yeah, okay, Paranoia Paul. I bet they are right back here in the kitchen. Foolishly trusting the words of Ranger Rick, Tuvok stumbled into what he assumed was the kitchen. Tuvok, wait! Something's not right! A primal fear took hold of Austin. He raced to his brother, desperate to grab him. What is that thing? In the shadows, the boys could only just make out a haunting silhouette. It looked like an effigy of sticks, but as it began to move, it became clear it was wrought of sinew and bone. Jesus Christ! Before the two florids could make sense of what it was, the creature had risen to the height of two men. It then drew back suddenly. A viper primed to strike. Go, Tuvok! Run! They flew toward the cabin entrance with the beast hot upon their heels. It's a fucking bone centipede! Quick! Get to Rick's cart! The horror lurched on its innumerable, sharp, bony limbs, whirling out of the cabin and toward the cart. Start! Start, damn it! Start, start, start! Out of the way, Ranger! <laughs> they had made it to safety. But for how long? Rick, what the fuck is that thing? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I've never seen it before. Uh, I think it was a gas leak. Y you think it was a fucking gas leak? Yes. It's not a gas leak, Tuvok. It's a giant fucking centipede made out of skeletons. Hey, uh, don't drive this so fast, or uh, the most likely explanation is the most true. That creature had all the hallmarks of a gas leak. The creature was far behind them now, distracted. Austin pressed Tuvok. How can you be so fucking dense? Did mom drink rattlesnake poison when you were in the womb? Sorry if the truth hurts your bottom line, charlatan, but ghosts are easily explained by simple phenomenon such as gas leaks. That was not a ghost either, Tuvok! Hey, I mean it with the driving, you gotta slow down or- I hunt ghosts because ghosts are real. I know people who have died to ghosts. I know people who are ghosts right now that I've hunted. I've seen a goddamn ghost train! Sorry, but facts don't care about your feelings. Tuvok, your brain does not care about oxygen. Rick, what's wrong? I was trying to tell you to slow down! The car's running out of hydrogen! Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay, look, the summer camp, it's just up ahead. Coast down into there, and maybe we can find some hydrogen fuel cells to get it powered up again. Copy that. Coasting into camp. The cart rolled into Camp Doom, coming to a gentle stop just inside the front gate. Our trio jumped out, desperate for hydrogen cells and eager to explore. Look, a gun range. See, you are here, and over here, a gun range. That's awesome, Tuvok. Uh, hey, why don't we split up to go look for hydrogen? You go over there, and I will go look anywhere else. That's a great idea. Both of you guys, uh, split up to look for the hydrogen, and I'll stay here and um, work on the car. Great idea, Rick. Bye, Tuvok. Austin set off into the darkness of the camp, casting his lot with the shadows and their secrets. He first chose to search what looked to be the old dining hall. Okay, maybe the kitchen has some helium tanks? F what was it that we needed for that fucking weird little car? It was then that Austin spied a treasure in the kitchen. Whoa! <laughs> Rusty knives. Maybe someone got murdered with these. Oh, hey. 
A nice rusty knife as you have there, friend. Uh, who, who are you? I'm Peter Joseph Lewis, America's third best voice actor. Oh, whew. I thought you were a ghost. I'm Austin Flory, Canada's third best ghost hunter. Oh, a ghost hunter? Hmm? Oh, what's an accomplished ghost hunter doing out here at an old abandoned summer camp? Uh, I, uh, well, I'm doing a lot? I was gonna ask you that, actually. What's an esteemed voice actor doing out here? I'm just getting into character for a special project. And I thought the cobwebs and, you know, the, uh, the things that have happened out here might help with that. Uh, oh, yeah? What sorts of things? Oh, all kinds of things. I'm sure you've heard more about it than I have. I'm only a voice actor. No, no, I am very lost. I do not know where I am. What's happening out here? Oh, my mistake. You know what they say about ass assumptions. I was just talking about the, uh, you know, the loss, the tragedy. Loss of what? I've seen some pretty messed up stuff around here. I assure you I can handle whatever you're gonna say. Oh, my apologies. I'm not trying to be coy. I just thought you knew about, you know. No, I really don't know. Is it like a ghost thing? Well, sure. If you believe in that stuff, then you'd probably believe in the ghosts at the Lake Eric Memorial Cave. Oh, cool. Okay. So, like, what happened in there? Some kind of nutty putty situation? Worse? Oh, nothing that bad. Just a few lost Boy Scouts. Ninety-eight of them died in the Lake Eric Boy Scouts of America Memorial Cave between 1956 and 1989. All of them under mysterious circumstances. Ninety-eight? Over more than... Fifty-six to eighty-nine? More than thirty years? Why did they keep going back inside? What happened in there? I don't know. I, I just said it was a mystery. In each of the many, many, many expeditions that Boy Scouts made into the cave, few of them came back, and no one knows why. Rescuers thought it would be too dangerous to even attempt any rescue missions, and eventually the government decided to close off the cave to the public. So they put up a sign saying it was closed, and that very sign was stolen 15 years ago. But it's still closed, or it's not on Google Maps. Wow! Well, yeah, you're right. There's got to be an unbelievable amount of ghosts in there. Thanks, Peter. I know where I'm going next. Ah, to solve the mystery? To find out what happened? To put them to rest? What? No, sorry, Peter. I'm a ghost hunter, not a detective. I'm just gonna wave my scanners around, slap the proverbial beehive, and leave. Amazing. You're a true artist, Austin. A true gentleman. And a true hero. Go get him, tiger. Thanks again, Peter. You're a real one. Good luck with your special project. Thank you. But I won't need luck where I'm going. <laughs> Well, I didn't find any hydrogen, but I did find a ghost lead, which is kind of like Austin fuel. Austin, having fresh news of an irrelevant haunted cave, skipped out of the mess hall, giddy with excitement. Back in the courtyard, he saw that Rick and Tuvok's search had been more productive than his own. Oh, nice! Looks like you found some hydrogen cells, Rick. Yeah, but it's expired. I'm gonna have to finagle it to make it work. Awesome. Perfect opportunity to piss. Uh, here, Rick, hold the camera. Perfect. I need to piss, too. Okay. You have to piss right where I piss? In the woods? I do, yes. You can piss anywhere. You could go anywhere else. You go that way, maybe. I'll go this way. I'm not gonna piss near you. I already looked at the bathroom. It's clogged. It's very dirty, so... No With the ghost hunter's departure, the creature emerged from its hiding place in the shadows. It slithered behind Ranger Rick. 
Ooh, ha, ha, I uh, didn't uh, see you there. The creature was angry with Rick. They had made a deal, but Rick did not deliver his end of the bargain this time. Instead, he had saved tonight's victim with his impotent and feeble cart. I, I wasn't driving. Listen, the big one pushed me away from the wheel and he drove off. I couldn't do anything to stop them at that point. The horror had no patience for Rick's excuses. It demanded to be fed. If Rick couldn't give it these hunters, then it would have to find something or someone else to eat. Hey, now, it doesn't have to come to that. We can work something out. I can get them on the road and I can maybe get them to a cave, maybe corner them. The creature decided to show Rick mercy. This time, Rick would be wise to fulfill his unholy duty. For even devils are not without their... Oh! Under fire, the creature quickly retreated, knowing the time to strike would present itself soon. Oh, damn, there it goes. <coughs> I, uh, uh, listen. Did it almost get you, Rick? Uh... Yes, I reckon. Yep, until I chased it off with this Glock. Where the f*** did you get that? The gun range. You actually found a gun at the gun range? I did, and I've used it too. Hey, watch it. <laughs> hey, uh, uh. And I'll use it again too. Hey, f hey, hey, hey! Chubok, what the f***? Those are hydrogen tanks. It's too late. They're leaking. We can't use these. Whoops. Looks like I got a little trigger happy. Well, we're out of fuel and the cart is shot up. Now what do we do? Uh, I have an idea. There's a cave up ahead. Right. Peter Lewis told me about this cave. America's third best voice actor? He told you it was a lava tube full of old equipment? More than that. He told me, get this, very cool, 98 Boy Scouts died in this cave. <laughs> Why are you so happy about that? I'm not happy they died. Don't get the wrong idea. You are positively beaming, boy. You look like you just sat on Santa's lap and asked for a bicycle. No, no, I'm not happy the Boy Scouts died. That's a terrible tragedy, 98 souls lost, but uh, that also means 98 cave-bound ghosts. It sounds like you're excited they died. I am not! They're already dead, guys. What do you want me to do? Unkill them? Let me be happy that life gives us sour lemons and leave it at that. Okay, I can agree to live and let someone suck lemons. As I was saying, another thing in the cave that Peter probably didn't know about is all the dang old abandoned mine equipment. Cave's chock full of it. What are they mining in a lava tube? Don't miners usually make the caves they mine in? Oh man, if only I'd been a miner instead of a park ranger. And maybe I wouldn't be in this pickle. Oh no, I don't know about that. I've been in plenty of paranormal monster scenarios with miners. No, not that. My other pickle. My student loan debt. That's right. You admitted your hidden shame earlier when you accepted my tip. You said that you had student debt. But why, Ranger Rick? What good is a college degree for a park ranger? It's no good to me, Tuvok. My degree is in... Psychology. <gasps> oh, goodness. Rick, I'm so sorry. Poor man. A psychology degree is a badge of defeat even amongst the Ivory Tower elite. It's true. I was confused on what I wanted to do and laugh. I got too deep into school and had to pick something. I didn't know what else to choose, so I went with what seemed easy. Who doesn't love thinking about thinking? But it turns out, the world has no place for a psychologist. So I have to work this terrible job to make my debt payments. Otherwise, the interest on the loans is going to get out of control and push me into debtor's prison. Rick, your job seems very easy. You have no idea, Tuvok. No idea. The things I have to do. The people I have to... K park... Ranger. Hey, don't beat yourself up, man. I have a useless degree, too. It's true, he does. I can tell my own stories, Tuvok, thank you. It's in clinical spectrometry. 
clinical spectrometry. Like using spectrometry in a clinical setting? Honestly, I thought it was clinical spectrometry. I thought it was the study of ghosts in hospitals. Yes, you would, Austin. Yes, I did, Tuvok. Fellas, look, there it is, the cave. Indeed, our trio had almost tripped over the cave they sought. Its rocky entrance beckoned them, as if the earth itself were calling out to these lost souls, inviting them into her bosom. But would Austin be so quick to trust the darkness again? Come on, let's get deep in this fucking cave. Cautiously, timidly, Austin stepped into the dark, rank cave. As he went forward, the rock scraped him on all sides. Ouch! It just scraped my side. Suddenly... What is that? Another gas leak? I don't reckon that's a gas leak. Rick, did you say this was an old mining operation? I did, yeah. What exactly did they mine? Uh, they mined... Wait, I recognize those noises! <laughs> Austin, wait! <laughs> I knew it! Someone was watching Lake Mungo! Oh yes, sorry, that was me. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bartholomew Geronimus, or the Crypt Bro, my friends call me. Hello, Crypt Brother, I am Tuvok. I'm Ranger Rick. And I'm... You're Austin Flory, Canada's third best ghost hunter. Yes, I'm a huge fan, actually. And I am Hith Brother, also. Yes. And I'm kind of a cop. What is this operation you got going on in here? Ah, yes. I have revived the mine. It is now a Bitcoin mine. Oh, <laughs> that's what all those mechanical noises were. The scary noise we heard earlier was just this huge scary fan and a scary movie playing on his TV. Yes, that's all true. But before, when this was a mine, they were mining adrenochrome. Why Bitcoin now? Well, I'm glad you asked. I was one of the Boy Scouts that survived this cave in the 80s. And I always got a chill when I came back here to visit. I thought, between the cheap power from the dam and that haunting chill, this would be the perfect place to mine Bitcoin. Well, is it, Mr. Genius Tech Bro Believer? Well, it could be better. The chill turned out to be something I was imagining. It's actually quite warm in here. But it would actually destroy all my gains if I had to pay to transport all these computers again. So I decided to make the best of it. That's why I installed this giant fan. Yes, of course. To blow air up your mainframe just like you're blowing hot smoke up our asses holes. I beg your pardon. I can't be tricked, sir, and I'm not buying anything. I'm not investing. I'm unfollowing. Crypto is not real. It is real money. See, I can right now take my wallet down to- Just because someone accepts a lie does not mean it is not a lie. Crypto is not real. It's not real money, but it's not real either. It's just like ghosts. Tuvok, take that back. Crypto is not like ghosts. Ah, but it is. Prove me wrong. Put a Bitcoin in my hand right now. No, I don't give a fuck about that. Crypto is not like ghosts. Shut the fuck up, you asshole. Ah, here. Brother of Austin, I can meet this challenge. Here, let me grab my Bitcoin wallet. Whoa, are those bones all over the floor? Oh yes, these are the dead Boy Scouts. These are the dead Boy Scouts? Hey, be careful, man. I don't think you want to disturb these. Oh, these? Yeah, I try to be careful. Ah, this is the hard drive I keep my Plex anime on. My Bitcoin wallet is hosted securely on my Triforce Arduino machine, actually. Over here. Hey, whoa, whoa! Careful with these cursed bones! They're all in a pile. They're gonna be pissed if you summon them all together. Yeah, I try to be careful. Oh, here it is. Here, Tuvok. 1,000 Bitcoins. This seems no different than a ghost to me. You were saying that to piss me off. Actually, Tuvok, better than that proof in your hot little hands is the proof of the equipment all around you. 
I bought all of this with Bitcoin that I mined without lifting a finger. Hold on. You make money doing this shit? Oh yes. I make tons of money. I'm actually a multi-millionaire. I own a yacht. I have three foreign wives. And I'm a member of the legislative yuan in Taiwan. And you do this on your, uh, phone? My computer. My mining rigs, more specifically. But here, for you, Tuvok, I have another example. I have a wallet that I've inlaid on a fed-busting, pure silver coin in the form of a solid-state Raspberry Pi machine, right over here. No, hey, that's fine. We don't need to be adding extra ghosts tonight. Aww. Do you have any spare hydrogen cells in here, friend? Hydrogen cells? Uh, let me check. Nah, looks like I'm fresh out. Damn. Yes, I'd check the dam next. I bet there's some there. Oh. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, of course, the dam with the bear cages and the hydrogen cells. The very same dam. Well, thanks for your help, Crypt Bro. I'm gonna turn a blind eye to your little operation here. For now. Hey, thanks, Rick. Maybe I could make that worth your while in the long run, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe you could. <laughs> Rick, you naughty f. He means money, Tuvok. Obviously. Quick, gang, let's get to the dam. I'm tired of the tangle of our lives. I want this to end. And make sure you knock next time. I try to be a private person. And so, they were released from the pit. No hydrogen cells to show, but a new friend instead. The suggestions of the Crypt Bro had proved fruitful for the Judas, Rick, who now led Austin and Tuvok to fate unknown at the Lake Eric Dam. <laughs> Huh, this Bitcoin stuff is really something. Do you guys know anyone can mine this stuff? And it's just free money! Tuvok, if you're just gonna be a dickhead about ghosts, why'd you ask me to come here to look at a ghost? I didn't ask you to do that. I asked you to come to the will reading of your great uncle that died. My uncle? Old Man Jenkins was my uncle? Yes, your uncle. And it would behoove you to act a bit more somber that he died, and a bit more grateful that he would leave some of his possessions to you in his will. Tuvok, let me see that f***ing letter. Here. Wow, this seems really easy to do, actually. Tuvok, this is written in blood, you knuckle-dragging f***er. This was a trap! And how do you think I was supposed to know this dark, iron-rich ink was blood? Because you said he was my uncle! We are brothers! We have the same uncles, you moron! I don't know what you get up to in your free time often. I don't get up to getting new uncles. And if I somehow got a new uncle, would he not be your uncle too? Austin was fed up with Tuvok. He made for the front of the group to rant as he walked. This entire debacle has been your fault. There was never any ghost. There was always a big dumb worm that was tricking you into bringing us out here. Oh, hey, here's the dam. Uh, quick, this way, guys. Over to these bear-proof food boxes. I don't see how it's my fault that you can't grow up and stop believing in the Santa Claus. If Santa Claus chased you through the woods, wouldn't you believe in him? Of course not. Okay, see, this is what I'm talking about. Hey, fellas, step like uh, two feet to your right. Uh, sure, yeah. Perfect. Tuvok? This is a long time coming. You're not some sort of genius savant. You are an idiot. You are dumber than a dead body. You're so easily tricked that a worm literally tricked you. You've told me this before. Yes, I have. And... Ah! A cage! Quick, is everyone okay? Tuvok, Rick? Yes, Austin. I'm fine. But I'm sorry, too. The dust cleared and outside of the cage stood Rick. His hand was placed on a lever, and sadness was in his eyes. <gasps> Rick, no, you've been a traitor this whole time? It was you that killed the Boy Scouts, Rick? What? No, it was me that brought you here to feed you to the monster. 
I'm being paid by the monster. I'm an employee of the horrific worm. It was you that wrote that letter. It was. And it was me that found the gun to shoot you. hi Nice try, Tubuck. But I picked your pocket and took all the bullets out of your gun when you were distracted in the Crippa Bros mine. I knew that was you with your hands in my pants. I should have said something. It was. I'm sorry, but the worm needs to eat, and I need to pay back Sally Mae. It's you or me, boys, and I learned in psychology class that the guy with the badge always chooses himself. So this is where we part ways. Wait, Rick, if you're going to leave us here, can you at least shoot Tuvok? Apologies, Austin. I can't even give you this. Tuvok has the gun. And now, the lake has the bullets. Won't be long until the worm gets you, boys. So like I said, so long, fellers. Tuvok and Austin were dumbstruck. As Rick disappeared into the darkness, so too did their hope of escape. Austin paced around the cage, bouncing off the bars like a fly snared in a spider's web. Well, good work, Tuvok. You've killed us. I suppose I may have messed up this time. Yeah. Unwilling to face the end, Austin hoped beyond all hope for something to deliver them from their pain. I'm fucking freezing my balls off. How long is this thing going to take to get here and kill us? <sighs> Tuvok, I'm sorry. I kind of enabled you to do this. You've got a bit of a track record of doing this kind of thing. You know, I should have maybe kept closer track of the details myself. Could have read that letter, maybe. In kind, Tuvok, faced with certain doom, decided he may as well own up to his shortcomings. The ones which Austin had fairly pointed out. Austin? Yeah? Uh, I don't think that creature is really a gas leak. There was a long silence. No. No, it's not a gas leak. <sighs> Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? He here at last on the ground, you in midair. Send it. Accenting the lonesome swan song of young Tuvok with grisly accord, something stirred in the distance. Hey, did you hear that? Austin could hear it now. The creature was whirling and wrenching itself over the earth, drawing ever nearer. No, not that. Hey, I think I can hear it. It was true. The shifting of the corpse creature rattled plainly through the night. No, no, it's the narration. Tuvok, that's it. It's the narration. Listen. Just when I thought. At Hell's Gate, Austin had a glimpse of the order behind this madness. It was too late, however. Before him, distant in the faint moonlight, he could just barely see the swirling mass of rotten flesh that was the beast. Making my entrance again with my usual flare. Tuvok, would you shut up? Shut up, Tuvok. Rick! Rick. That's right, boys. I'm back. Rick grabbed the cage with confidence, fearless of the coming monster. It was my lonesome singing that brought you back, wasn't it? No, not at all. I realized I could just mine Bitcoin to pay my student loans back. I don't need to keep feeding people to the worm. Hiya! Our cage! It's gone! Now quick, boys, it's close. Grab onto these long hanging vines. Okay. okay! They thought they had been saved, but the creature was already upon them. They were caught. Don't listen to it. Come on, guys, and swing away! 
Their hands were stiff and weak from the cold night air. They couldn't grasp their vines, and they began to slip. Nice try, worm thing. We're not falling for it. I know where we can find safety. Come on. Oh. Ah. I see. Old man Jenkins' cabin. The creature would never look for us here because it's embarrassed about how badly we owned it the first time. Exactly. But truth be told, there is no old man Jenkins. This is actually just an Airbnb I've been renting for 15 years. Here, I can turn on the breaker to fix the lads. Oh my god. Ew, nasty. Yes, here's where the creature's been eating all of its prey. The pile of wet rubber. It was a pile of human skin? That's right. In the vintage ghost hunting gear. This place is covered in it. Yeah. I just kind of leave this junk here after the bone snake is done feasting. These flashlights. These candles and pouches of salt. Rick, are all these victims ghost hunters? Yes. That's what the creature desires to feed on most. That's what it's made of. The bones of ghost hunters it's devoured. By the twin gods. That's horrific. I reckon there's been hundreds of them eaten over the years by that thing. It's gotten super long. It was maybe only like one or two skeletons when I started working for it in the 90s. High on cocaine. That's... Huh? None of them are haunting this place? Does the worm eat their souls too? Not that I'm aware of. It seems to eat their flesh. Well, I appreciate the professional courtesy of these guys. Say, Rick, what do you call the creature exactly? Does it have a name for itself? Well, no. But the locals call it the Desert Jackal. The Desert Jackal? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, the other name for it comes from the natives of Lake Eric. The narrator. That perfectly explains all the narration I've been hearing. But how then do we kill something that exists outside of the story? How do we kill the narrator? I reckon it's actually not that hard. It's a real, tangible body that binds its evil spirit to the earth. All you have to do is smash it to pieces. Maybe if all three of us worked together, we could somehow destroy it by causing massive physical trauma to its body. Something massive that we could violently hit it with. Hmm. Did we find any hydrogen to fill the cart with? We could run it over. Uh, pause a moment. If the creature is weak to physical damage, perhaps we do not need to fight it head on. Go on, Tuvok. Remember that giant fan inside the Cryprose cave? Perhaps we could lure the creature into that fan, cutting it to pieces with the massive steel blades. Tuvok, that plan is actually pretty good. Yeah, that's as good as plan as I've ever heard. Yes, of course. We let a machine do the fighting for us. Come on, you guys put on some of this ghost hunter loot. I have an idea how we can get the narrator in that cave. Here, I'll put on this wallet chain, and these boat shoes, and I'll slick back my hair with one of those tubes of hair gel. And I can don this beautiful trilby, and these pewter skull rings, and these transition lenses. Yes, perfect. I'll refresh my scent with some of this Axe body spray. Everybody grab trilbies. The closer to early 2000s, the better. High and low the creature searched, but its wayward prey could not be found. Perhaps there was... Ghost. A fall sounded off in the darkness. The creature looked out to see that there was... If ghost hunter flesh is what you desire, then you'll have to work for it. Ha! <sighs> yeah! 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 Having spotted fresh prey, the beast made haste towards this new, strange ghost hunter that presented himself to be eaten. Ghosts! I've checked my EMF and my spirit board, and all the spirits say you'll need to be quick to devour my delicious flesh. 
The creature smiled in the only way that it could, by getting hungrier and faster as it chased the ghost hunters. It's working! <laughs> I was so sure Tuvok was gonna die! Creature, if you want the flesh of one of Canada's best ghost hunters, you'll have to be faster than that. There, up ahead, the cave! High dive landings, boys. Cornered, the hunted hunters had chosen to hide in the Crypt Bros cave. These fucking things. What's going on? What are you guys running in here for? I swear to God, there's nothing on my hard drives. Don't look! Out of the way, Crypt Bro. Let me grab the fan controls. At last, the nightmare would end. In blood and in death. Here, beast. My skin, pale white from hiding in abandoned hotels all day. The beast confronted the provocative hunter, the one that looked much like Tuvok. The same one who now stood just beyond some large fan. Almost. The end was nigh, and the ugliest of the ghost hunters trembled, as he knew his final moments were upon him. I am not scared of you, you fat worm. Almost. There! <laughs> Their futile attempts to trick the beast had failed. The machines of man proving too weak to harm the creature. Fuck, it didn't work! My fucking Natua! You think I'm scared of a little flaying? A few liters of blood won't scare me anymore either. Tuvok, no! Get back! You'll never kill it like that! Forgive me, Sensei Seagal. I promised I'd never use Akito to fight monsters, but I have to break my vow. God fucking damn it! This is never gonna work. Wait. The Boy Scout bones! I have an idea. Spirits, awake! I disturb you from your slumber to fight your ancient killer! What? Rise and slaughter the creature which stole from you your lives! Attack, spirits! Seek vengeance! What horrors had the ghost hunters awoken? What manner of necromancy was being used to control these ghastly boy scouts? Drag him to the pit. No, no, not the pit. No, no, no. <sighs> wow. Great ghost wrangle in Austin. Yeah, more like great CGI. I thought you hunted ghosts, though. Why are they doing your bidding? It's an old ghost hunter trick, Rick. They're not doing my bidding. See, ghosts are bound to the material world through various means. These Boy Scouts were bound here because of the horrors they faced by being eaten by this creature. Huh? The Boy Scouts in this cave definitely didn't die from the worm. I brought this creature here in the 90s, and all these Boy Scouts died in the 70s and 80s. What? Yeah, it really is a mystery what happened here. I wasn't lying when I told you I didn't know what happened to the boys. At last, we have the flesh of Abduzia Spawn. Feast, true brothers, that we can begin Belial's sacred sack of the surface! Guys, we gotta get out of here! Get down! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
All the bonds are used. Uh, get to the shore. Get him. Look there. It's Mendoza. You guys need a ride? Yes. <laughs> you came! I thought we were never going to see you again, Mendoza. I wasn't going to pick you up. I was bringing those hydrogen cells for Ranger Rick. Oh my goodness, Mendoza, you rascal. <laughs> <laughs> and so, they parted away. Into the night, back to the world, out of Lake Eric and away from Camp Doom. They left behind the horde they had awoken. Did anyone else hear that? The end? 